The Lessons and Carol service we do this morning is adapted from the English tradition dating back to 1878 in Truro Cathedral in Cornwall, England. The original Advent liturgy has since been adapted and by used by other churches all over the world. Lessons and Carols most often occurs in Anglican churches, the most famous being the Christmas Eve service from King's College, Cambridge. In the UK, the service has become a standard format for school Christmas carol services. Jennifer and I had the privilege of attending several Lessons and Carol services in small country churches in England. The essential part of the service is the nine lessons followed by the carols, and it traces our history from Genesis to the Incarnation. Would you please stand for the bidding prayer? Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, be at this Christmas tide our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save, for love and unity within the one church he did build, and for goodwill amongst all people. And particularly at this time, let us remember before him the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lowly and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before him them who rejoice with us but upon another shore and in a greater light met multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in this Lord Jesus, we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven with the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ giveth the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, May the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. Be seated. The first lesson, God tells a sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will crush his heel. To Adam he said, 
Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. The second lesson. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Thanks be to God. The third lesson. The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David, and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Thanks be to God. Fourth lesson. The peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked and the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little boy will lead them. Also the cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. And the nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra, And the weaned child will put her hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. The fifth lesson. The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. Sixth lesson. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. Seventh lesson, the shepherds go to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who is lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. Lesson 8. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. 
Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I might too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Thanks be to God. The ninth lesson, St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, in, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that light was, life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to those who were his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Will the congregation please stand and join with me in saying our final collect together. Let us pray. O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, Grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill us with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen.